fighting at a Saipan Northern Mariana Islands. My name is Frank the Crank Camacho. I'm a pro MMA fighter and I fight in the UFC. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Growing up, I wasn't really your athletic kid. You know, I had two silver teeth and I was kind of heavy. Going into high school, I really wanted to get in shape. And when I was 14, 15, I went to this gym called Trench Tech. Cookie Alvarez was running it and the, their main instructor was Tetsuji Kato. He was a Shuto champion. Cookie was throwing his Trench Wars show and he was like, hey Frank, man, you want to test your skills? So I was like, ah, oh, dude, heck yeah, man. I was 16 years old, so, you know, my dad signed the waiver and uh, he, you know, of course he watched me training just to see that I wasn't, um, you know, bullshitting. One of my most memorable fights was uh, my second fight, Trench Wars 2. I fought my Uncle Mike, my Uncle Mike Camacho. Super Chamorro style, super Saipan style, you know, we got into the cage and, uh, you know, I ended up um, getting the win. Around this time, I was graduating high school and I was at a crossroads of either going to school and pursuing my golf career or chasing the dream of fighting MMA and fighting in the UFC. So I ended up buying a one-way ticket to Maryland to train with Team Lloyd Irvin. And at first it was culture shock. Living in an island, going straight to a metropolitan city, it was night and day from the moment of waking up to the moment of sleep. All we thought about was fight. I was addicted to the grind, I was addicted to the discipline, to the hard, hard training. We were training to all become world champions. Nothing else mattered. Every Christmas, I would always look forward to coming home and visiting visiting family and friends. One Christmas, I, I came back and I, I actually met this girl. Her name was uh, Sarah. I was at this time in my life where all I thought about was training. She really added balance to my life. In 2013, I ended up moving back home and started fighting in trench wars again. And I started fighting in PXC again. I had some epic fights and really, really good wins. And I also had some really, really tough losses. Cutting to 155 was taking its toll on my health. So I decided to go up a weight class. And things didn't go as planned. For the first time in 14 years, I was questioning my career in MMA. In 2016, I ended up having my son. He has been a true blessing in my life. I ended up marrying the love of my life in 2017, and you know, life was good and life was great, and it's been amazing. And I still had this itch, and I still had in my mind the dream of fighting in the UFC. In May 2017, Rites of Passage 21, my only objective was to win. And little did I know, this was about to be the toughest fight of my career. This is the fight that changed my life. So three days after the fight, I got a call from my manager. He said, Frank, they're looking for a last minute replacement for the UFC in a week and a half. I was like, what? I've been dreaming of this moment for 14 years. People told me I couldn't do it, said my dreams were impossible, but I still fought for them. I fought for what I wanted. I fought for what I loved. I fought for what I believed in. I fought for my people, for my home. I fought for what was right. I stayed true to myself. I never gave up. And now my dreams are reality. It was UFC Singapore. I told him I'm in. Let's do it. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. By showing love, you show affection to to your partner, to whoever, right? And here, our training partners, in order to show love, man, you gotta really, man, if anything, truthfully, look, you gotta cause pain, massive amounts of pain, you know? 
and there's there's a way to do it and there's a way to just hurt people hurt them but man at the same time dude yeah you're getting dude i'm getting i'm getting fucked up you know like i'm getting beat up and if i didn't do that to my training partners then i would be doing them a disservice so the thing i like like about martial arts man it just keeps it real keeps it keeps everything true you know there's nothing there's no lies about it if i get my ass whooped there's no lying about it you guys see it it's not gonna make me better it's up to me to make it better Opening to finish him or knock him off. Take or it. You better take it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Opportunities are the window's gonna close very fast. Cool. On three, crank. On three, crank. Ready? Roll down. One, two, three, crank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Franklin wants to go and we're rooting for you, Daddy, even though you're right here in front of us. You can watch this while you're in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Guy. All right, here we go. What's up, brother? How's it going? Hello, hello. Man, my, my friend all the way from since Saipan. Yep. Right on, brother. Red Frank. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> Camacho in on late notice, wearing the black shorts. Jing Liang in the red. Both guys ready to bang straight away. Both heavy on that front foot. See. Oh! oh! Big power right hand, just as I was talking about it. Camacho is eating that, walking forward with his chin tall, gets tagged again. Confident in his chin. 